like keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show. Time to talk tight ends. A, a nice battle that's going to be happening during training camp is Ross Dwelly versus Cameron Latu. This is going to be absolutely spectacular. Dwelly, who's been around the 49ers organization for a long time, uh, coming on the scene really well in 2019 and making an impact in that season where the 49ers go all the way to the Super Bowl. And young rookie Cameron Latu, who's going to be coming in from Alabama, the 49ers' third-round pick. It's going to be a huge battle in training camp. And why do I pick this one as a battle? Because you have other players, of course, you know that are going to be battling for roster spots. You have Braden Willis. You have Charlie Warner. You have Troy Fumagalli. All those guys potentially could be in battles or a spot on this 49ers roster. The reason this one was my selection was because this is what Cameron Latu is going to be expected to do is be that pass threat option for George Kittle. Of course, the other guys like Braden Willis, he can do it. He can do it all. He can catch the ball. He can block. But Cameron Latu's uh, problems with his, as far as inefficiencies is in the blocking game. Ross Dwelly's inefficiencies are in the blocking game. There's not really questions about Ross Dwelly's ability to catch the football. He's he's definitely able to get open to Kyle Shanahan's system. Last year, he caught the first touchdown from Jimmy Garoppolo when he came into Seattle. So you see the ability there. And then you see Latu. And Latu's transitioning from playing you know, defensive line as a, an outside linebacker slash defensive end for Alabama to playing tight end. Being new to the position, but having the amount of talent he does uh, makes you think that, yeah, the transition as far as blocking is not going as fast as I'm sure a lot hope, but he finds a way to get open, and when he does get the ball in his hands, he makes a play. So I think these guys are in direct battle. If Latu outplays Ross Dwelly, I think Latu will be on the 40 yards 53-man roster, and Ross Dwelly will not. I don't think I see a circumstance in which you keep both of these guys because of their strengths and weaknesses being somewhat similar. They're similar in a lot of facets. Both of them are six foot five with Cameron Latu coming in about 245 pounds, Ross Dwelly about 235. So only a 10 pound difference between the two, uh, but you see a more physical presence with Cameron Latu on the field. The one thing that Ross Dwelly definitely has at his advantage over Cameron Latu is, of course, he understands this offense and he understands it inside and out. Because the 49ers have asked Ross Dwelly to do almost everything a tight end is expected to do. Play in line, uh, run your routes, block from there. Be a move tight end, go in motion, be able to block and go out and pa- from passes uh, from there. Uh, play fullback in place of Kyle Juszczyk or just in certain packages. He's been able to do that. So those are all advantages for Ross Dwelly going in and why he's probably ahead of Cameron Latu on the depth chart initially entering training camp. My thing is, I think Cameron Latu is going to catch Ross Dwelly really quickly as he translates and figures out this 49ers offense. I think he's going to figure out exactly what his role is. I also believe that even though these two are similar as far as what their strengths and weaknesses are as far as catching the football uh, and then their weakness as far as blocking, I think Latu is going to be asked to do a little bit of a different task than what was asked from Dwelly. Dwelly didn't really have the ability to go play in the slot, to be a big slot. He would get covered. Uh, there were safeties and linebackers that could definitely cover him in the slot, where their belief is that Cameron Latu can win those battles. So Latu has an advantage in that category that he can play in the slot. And when the 49ers go with two tight ends, They can definitely open that up, keep teams in a base 4-3 set, and take advantage of either Latu on a linebacker, Kittle on a linebacker, or what could really be a problem for opposing defenses is if they have a safety on Latu because of coverage, and then you get Christian McCaffrey on a linebacker. 
Those are mismatches that you can get by keeping teams in base for three sets. Before Christian McCaffrey, uh, you wanted to get them in a nickel and you wanted to find advantages for Jawan Jennings against nickel corners or Debo Samuel or, or whatever. Well, now with Christian McCaffrey, you can find direct uh, disadvantages for defense and matchup problems by putting them in base four three sets. So Kyle Shanahan really has his decision on how he wants to go. And part of that decision is helped and encouraged by having a guy like Cameron Latu on the 49ers roster and at the tight end position. So I think those abilities right there are what's going to help Cameron Latu move up this 49ers depth chart. Of course, he's going to have to prove it on the field. He's going to have to be better as a blocker. He's going to have to be more physical at the point of attack and be able to get some movement. The 49ers offense is predicated on getting movement along the uh, offensive line at the line of scrimmage. And that is an extension to the tight end. The tight end is an extension of that offensive line. And we've seen Kittle do it for so long. And we've seen uh, a guy like... Um, uh, Charlie Warner be able to do it. I went blank. Charlie Warner be able to do it uh, at a very consistent basis. So I'm very excited about what Cameron Latu adds to this offense and how exactly uh, Kyle Shanahan's planning to use him in a variety of ways, but mainly for that slot. The question will be, is, is it going to be a little bit of give and take where Braden Willis could take some of the Ross Dwelly normal responsibilities that's playing in line being a move tight end playing in the backfield because I don't think Latu is really a guy you could put in the fullback position but I believe Willis is so if you could get that from him that might help overall Latu's development and being able to transition into Kyle Shanahan's offense because the goal for Kyle is to use his players to their best skill set ability and for Latu, that is getting him out in the open field where he can catch the football initially. I think there's going to be development, and then eventually he'll be able to play whenever you need him. Oh, Kittle needs a break. Here you go. Latu, go in, play tight end, and he will be a dual threat, a guy that can block and catch the football. It's just right now he hasn't fully developed in the blocking game, but that's definitely something he can handle. His size, his strength, all of it is there. He just has to be coached up. And I believe the 49ers have not only the coaching staff to do so, but the players surrounding Cameron Latu at the position to help develop him. So what does Ross Dwelly have to do to hold off Cameron Latu? Well, first off, he's got to go out there and he's got to execute everything he's asked. And that means stacking great reps at blocking. That is something that has definitely been a troublesome area for him. If he can be more consistent and stack good reps blocking, and then when he's out there and has his opportunities to catch the football, he always does it every training camp, is catch those footballs, don't allow balls on the ground, make sure you're beating the 49ers really good linebackers and good safety group and having those big catches. That is his only way he's going to be able to beat out Cameron Law to. He's going to have to execute at such a high level that the 49ers can't pass up keeping him on this roster. When it comes to Cameron Latu, what does he need to do to beat Ross Dwelly? He just needs to develop. He needs to make sure he's taking the proper steps forward. If he stays stagnant, the 49ers are going to have to find a way to keep him on the roster while using other players. If Latu starts to get that ball, roll, ball rolling on developing and becoming an impact player from the tight end position, there is nothing Ross Dwelly could do to stop that. Uh, Ross Dwelly would have to play, you know, out of this world to be able to stop the momentum of Cameron Latu coming on the scene and making those plays because he just has more physical gifts than Ross Dwelly. It doesn't mean he's a better tight end than Ross Dwelly yet, uh, but he has the gifts to prove that he can get there and surpass Dwelly. But same thing with Cameron Latu. He's got to stack good reps. He's got to develop as a blocker in the run game. No block, no rock for Kyle Shanahan. So you just got to get better. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be great right away. You just have to get better and better every day. If they see that progress. That's going to be huge. And when he's asked to play in the slot, he needs to not only block at a high level to make that worth putting the base 4-3 out there, but he also has to be good enough in the passing game to be able to make defensive players believe he's an option 
in the passing game. If he can do that and he can get open and he can convert on some big plays, that will make it difficult for opposing defenses who have to cover Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield. And that could get favorable matchups for a lot too early where the, where the opposing defenses decide, you know what? We're going to take away Kittle. We're going to take away McCaffrey. And we're going to make you beat us with a guy like Latu. If Latu wins those battles, especially during training camp against his own roster, and then in preseason, then Cameron Latu is going to ascend up this depth chart. And he could go as high as two before training camp is over if he's able to develop in those areas. So I think... We know the exact blueprint for what Latu has to do to make this team. And we know Ross Dwoli has to do everything right and then hope Latu doesn't improve at a rapid pace to be able to make this roster. One thing is clear, John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan, and this 49ers uh, organization are building and trying to get depth and trying to get better at every single position. Is this position going to overtake George Kittle? Absolutely not. Is this position going to help service George Kittle as far as giving him breaks and then giving a real threat as a number two tight end? I believe so. Excited about Cameron Latu and excited to see this battle in training camp because uh, the winner's going to make this roster. The loser could be gone. And Cameron Latu's case, the, the fact is he might end up you know, on the team but inactive for games if he's not able to beat out Ross Dwelly. He doesn't want that. He wants to play. The 49ers want him out there. And for Dwelly, you hope that next that last scenario happens, that Latu's inactive, and that you've made this roster. Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already on the push for 4K. Thank you so much for watching this training camp battle about Ross Dwelly and Cameron Latu. It's a lot of fun to talk about these battles, and they're going to all uh, come to conclusion during training camp in the preseason. Looking forward to being out there and watching them. And you can catch updates right here on the 49ers Cutback. Looking forward to more episodes coming your way. But until then, stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way.